Hi, I'm Monroe Bergdorf. I'm a British model and social activist, primarily focusing on the areas of gender and racial equality. Recently, there's been a shift in how the media, more specifically the film, beauty and fashion industry, are marketing themselves to reach a wider, more diverse audience. So why does this matter and why is it necessary? Can brands be truly inclusive if their company is not? As someone who participated in a highly publicised diversity campaign gone wrong, I can clearly lay out how we can all become truly inclusive agents of change when it comes to consuming or questioning the capitalisation of diversity or the commercialisation of wokeness. Why do some ideas succeed where others fail? What is authentic storytelling and why is it so important? In order for me to answer these questions, I'm going to take you back to the beginning of my story. I was born in 1986, outside London in Essex. I was assigned male at birth, and much like many other transgender children, I spent much of my childhood feeling somewhat detached and a little bit isolated, but never really being able to pinpoint why. I couldn't see any examples of what I like to call role options in the media or in person to look up to. There just weren't any role options who shared my intersectionality, who shared my identities that I would grow into. And as a result, I ended up looking to and comparing myself to the white, cisgender, heterosexual standard of success, beauty and culture. Fast forward to my late teens, early 20s and years of internalised racism, gender dysphoria, homophobia and body dysmorphia come to a head. At this point, I'm a young adult about to go out into the world unsure of where I stand. But what I knew was that to get ahead, I had to repress and lie about who I was because people like me did not succeed. Transitioning without any visible role models was tough. I was living out loud with no point of reference, with no aspirational stories to look to. Everything was trial and error. But slowly, I started to see women that I could see myself in. Women such as Janet Mock. <laughs> women such as Laverne Cox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> women such as Gina Recaro. <laughs> and women such as Isis King. Finally, I was exposed to the stories of strong, intelligent, determined, driven transgender women of colour who weren't afraid to use their voices. It's a long story, but around this time, I was already working as a model. The fashion industry had an obsession with androgyny and club culture, and as a result, I found myself gaining a voice, and I wanted to use that platform to speak up for other women like myself. Everything clicked the day that I shot my first big brand campaign for Japanese clothing label Unico. For the first time, I was hired not just as a trans model, but as a person with a story, a person with a message and a person with a unique perspective. For me, being booked for this campaign not only highlighted the importance of visibility, it planted the seed of activism that would later grow with the other jobs that I'd be booked for. And I began to use my voice to highlight the issues experienced by LGBT and BAME identities. So that's just one reason why identity matters to me and why inclusion matters to me. Because authentic storytelling requires authentic voices. Because it's possible to be what you cannot see, but it's ten times harder. Without authentic, diverse stories, which can serve as a source of inspiration, empowerment, or confirmation to those who are so often overlooked. Visibility, diversity, and representation serve as a much needed reminder that we are good enough as we are, that we do not need to strive for unattainable standards in order to be happy, successful, validated, or understood. Diverse branding, increased visibility, and representation can be powerful tools when they are authentically executed. But in order for them, that to happen, the people who compile these campaigns, the teams who build these diverse branding strategies, need to be diverse themselves. It has to come from a place of authenticity and lived experience with diverse bodies in decision-making roles, not just being allocated tasks, diverse bodies in decision-making roles. And I want you to say that with me. Diverse bodies in decision-making roles, so important. 
hashtag after hashtag, we've seen firsthand the power of social media in getting behind marginalised voices. Hashtags such as trans is beautiful to amplify the voices of trans people. Black Lives Matter to call out police brutality. Black Boy Joy to encourage black men to show their emotions. Me Too to stand behind the survivors of sexual assault. Time's Up to call out institutionalised sexual harassment. And Love is Love to support the LGBT community with gay marriage. It must be a priority for all of us as consumers to make sure that these authentic messages are protected and not watered down or co-opted on a surface level by big businesses who seek to profit from the demographics that they are seeking to empower without having the often difficult but necessary conversations that must come with. I myself was part of a diversity campaign gone awry. It went awry because when it came to the crux of having those difficult conversations about why we need diversity in the first place, my voice as a transgender woman of colour was silenced. If brands want to employ marginalised models to cater to a diverse audience, they must realise why there is a need for this in the first place. Marginalisation, oppression, stigma and prejudice suck. Hopefully, that's something that we can all agree on. <laughs> but in order to progress, we must have these tough conversations. We must be willing to get uncomfortable and get our hands dirty. Structural oppression punches down, not across. And until we live in an equal society, we must identify the sources of these oppressions. It's not a personal attack, but a necessary component in deconstructing them. Sexism exists because women are oppressed by the patriarchy, a system that is built to benefit men. Ableism exists because disabled people are often overlooked or ignored or oppressed by able-bodied people. Homophobia and transphobia exist because gay and trans people are often oppressed by heterosexual and cisgender people. Classism exists because rich oppress the poor. Racism exists because people of colour are oppressed by white supremacy. All of these systems, sexism, ableism, homophobia, transphobia, classism and racism are the reason why diversity matters. That's just a fact. And to deny that turns an important message to nothing more than a PR exercise compiled of smoke and mirrors to retain the status quo and stop questions being asked. For instance, we can look at the casting procedure of lingerie brand Victoria's Secret. Whilst the casting may be diverse with regards to race, when it comes to body shape, size and gender identity, we can see very little diversity. In fact, when asked about this lack of diversity, Chief Marketing Officer of the brand stated, shouldn't you have transsexuals in the show? No, no, I don't think that we should. Well, why not? Because the show is a fantasy. This statement not only suggests that the brand is wildly out of touch with how to refer to the transgender community, but it also says that they're willing to discriminate against and exclude a huge cross-section of their audience to uphold cisgender, heterosexual, hyper-feminine beauty as the pinnacle for all women to strive to. When in fact times are changing, almost all women want to see ourselves reflected, not to be told that we should be striving for something that we are not, furthermore, something that we can never be. So who is this fantasy for? The women or girls buying the lingerie? Or the heterosexual men tuning into the 40-minute special on television to watch the models in the lingerie? There's no doubt that these Victoria's Secret models are beautiful, they're stunning. But beauty, just like gender and sexuality, operates on a spectrum. A wonderful, diverse, varied spectrum. To present a monolithic ideology of the perfect woman isn't just unrealistic, it's damaging to young, impressionable women and girls who look to such beauty as the goal and everything else as failure. Let's not also forget that diversity benefits everyone. The idea is a level playing field to make things fair for all people, not just for some. If done correctly and authentically, it can be a truly beneficial asset to both marginalised communities and businesses alike. We only need to look at Nike standing behind Colin Kaepernick and Black Lives Matter, Rihanna's Fenty brand providing ample shades of lingerie and makeup, the continued success of Max Viva Glam line, raising money to combat and support those living with HIV and AIDS. The number one box office smashes, Black Panther and Crazy Rich Asians. 
the success of TV shows such as Pose, which boasted the biggest transgender cast in history. Diversity does not need to be bad for business. If done authentically, it benefits all. In today's politically turbulent time, now is the time for all of us to start fighting for what is right on all levels. Representation isn't everything if it isn't accurate. The illusion of diversity can be just as damaging as no diversity at all. So I urge you all to think about where you're spending your money. Do your political beliefs align with the businesses that you are investing in? Are your stories being shared accurately? Does your community have a voice? And if not, then why not? And if not now, then when? Times are changing, and it's so important that marketing campaigns mirror that change. We all have the capacity to move society forward in a way that includes us all, but that's going to include all of us becoming aware of what is real and what is illusion when it comes to who and what we support.